ஹாய் இன்றைக்கி நம்ம பார்க்க போகிறது ஒரு ப்ராப்ளம் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் ஏ எசன்ட்ரிக் லோடிங் ஸோ பிஃபோர் கோயிங் டு சால்வ் த ப்ராப்ளம் வி கேன் சி தட் வாட் எசன்ட்ரிக் லோடிங் அண்ட் ஹவு வி கேன் கன்வெர்ட் இன் டு நார்மல் லோட் ஸோ ஆக்சுவலி ஐ ஹவ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் தட் ஏ எலமெண்ட் அண்ட் இஃப் த ஃபோர்ஸ் ஆக்டிங் அலாங் த ஆக்சிஸ் தட் இல் பி டைரக்ட் லோடிங் ஸோ இஃப் இட் இஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் புஷிங் தட் இல் பி கம்ப்ரெஷன் If it is kind of pulling, then that will be tensile. Suppose if there is an element and the load is acting perpendicular to the axis, then it will be known as bending. And when there is an element which will be twisted along its axis, then torsion. So these are the direct loading condition. But what actually the problem is not every load will be acting directly there may be some eccentric or eccentricity will be there so consider a element and a frame externally attached with it and here will be the central axis so now the load is acting at the free end of the frame let me take this one as p so here there is some distance from the axis to the load acting point that is eccentricity so eccentricity is nothing but there is some deviation between the axis and the load acting point so romba simple ah solna appadina endha or element layo axis ku related illama or force act aagudhu which is not along the axis or perpendicular to the axis and when the load acting and the axis is parallel so here the line of action of force and the central axis are parallel and non coinciding there is no coinciding between the load acting and the axis at the same time both are parallel then this kind of loading is known as eccentric loading so here we have to convert the eccentric loading into normal loading so how we can convert it we can see that so we can say here is element and here there is axis and here will be the load acting p and the bottom end of the axis is fixed so here the load is not directly acting along the axis or perpendicular to the axis both are parallel and having some distance we know the distance is known as eccentricity so this kind of load is eccentric loading how we are going to convert so what i am going to do is i simply add one force and i will simply subtract one force so here is actual load that is p what i am going to do is along the axis i will give one positive force and i will give one negative force if it is positive this will be positive both the same direction so opposite direction this will be negative so when we see in the previous diagram the summation of force will be only one force is there so summation of forces p so nothing is there 0 0 0 whatever so the summation of force is p and here the summation of force is sigma p is equal to p and another one load is there and another one load in opposite direction so the summation will be again p so for both cases the summation of force is p only so both are equal so whatever may be the system the load acting the summation of forces of the both system are equal now i am going to consider in different way let me make one combination and the another combination so this is first one and this is second one let me see the first one alone so what is first one actually the element is there and along the axis one load p is there so here we can simply say that your load is acting along the axis kind of pushing so it will be compression so due to compression the stress will be generated that is compressive stress which is nothing but load acting divided up by the cross section area so this is the first combination and when we go for the second combination so actually before going to see the second combination i am going to explain the concept of a couple so couple means two forces which are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and in parallel then it will form a couple so it is based on uh, how the force is acting two forces are there same kind of forces both are in opposite to each other and then having some deviations between them and both are parallel so so 
the direction of the couple will be depends upon the puts upon the force acting the right side force acting downwards and left side force acting upwards so it will be clockwise direction suppose the right side force acting upwards and left side force acting downwards it will form anti clockwise couple so romba simple ah solla apna or eccentric loading condition na normal loading condition ah convert panna porom so ஒரு லோடை ஆட் பண்ணுறோம் ஒரு லோடை சப்ஸ்ட்ராக்ட் பண்ணுறோம் இப்போ சம்மேஷன் பார்த்தா ப்ளஸ் பி ப்ளஸ் பி அண்ட் மைனஸ் பி ஸோ டோட்டல் சம்மேஷன் ஃப்ரீ ஆகிடும் ஸோ அதுக்கப்புறம் என்ன பண்ணுறோம் அப்படின்னா இந்த மூணு ஃபோர்ஸை நான் ரெண்டு காம்பினேஷனாக பிரிக்கிறேன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆக்சிஸ் அலாங்காக இருக்க கம்ப்ரெசிவ் ஃபோர்ஸ் அண்ட் ரிமைனிங் இருக்க ரெண்டு ஃபோர்ஸ் ஸோ கம்ப்ரெசிவ் ஃபோர்ஸ்னால் என்ன அலாங் த ஆக்சிஸ் ஃபோர்ஸ் வில் பி ஆக்டிங் இஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் புஷிங் ஸோ தட் இஸ் கம்ப்ரெசிவ் லோட் அண்ட் த கம்ப்ரெஷன் லோட் வில் ஜென்ரேட் தி கம்ப்ரெசிவ் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் இன்சைட் தி எலமெண்ட் ஸோ இன்சைட் த எலமெண்ட் த கம்ப்ரெசிவ் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் வில் பி தேர் and then another second combination two loads both are equal and opposite in direction and both are acting parallel then it will form a couple couple is nothing but kind of bending so i have to calculate the bending stress so in first combination i have to calculate the compressive stress that is nothing but load by area in second combination i have to calculate the bending stress which is nothing but mb y by i bending moment and the distance between the axis and outermost layer and then i is moment of inertia based on the cross section so after calculating sigma z and sigma t i can calculate the total stress value total stress is nothing but summation algebraic sum of algebraic sum of sigma c and sigma b so i have to do the summation based on the direction then total of the both stresses will be the total stress that's it so whenever see the eccentric problem we have to draw the diagram of eccentricity then we have to convert into normal loading condition by adding one positive and negative force and after that we have to do a separate combination having one direct force and a couple and then we can calculate the direct stress and the bending stress and by doing the summation we can calculate the total stress value so these are the eccentric loading conversion to normal loading condition now come to the problem here we have to find the stresses at the side of the column side means let me say that so here the, we can consider two points point a and point b so we have to calculate the stress at point a and point b the diagram is given in the problem and the cross section of the uh, that rod is hollow that inner diameter is 200 mm and outer diameter is 250 mm and the load will be acting at the end of the frame 20 kN and having the eccentricity from the centroidal axis 500 mm so this is normal problem da paathone theriyum force act aagudhu adu enga irukku axis ku parallel a irukku then or eccentricity distance irukku so eppo or force centroidal axis ku parallel a act aagudho appo na adu eccentric loading sollalam adu coincide aagala parallel da irukku distance irukku so we can simply say that eccentric loading as eccentric loading appadina enna panuvom appadina we have to convert that into normal loading condition so let me convert it so this will be the initial diagram here the load is acting that is 20 kN and now to convert into normal loading condition along the axis what i have to do is i have to add one negative positive force and i have to add one negative force so 20 kN again 20 kN then what should i do next is i have to make a combination so here is one combination number 1 and here is the another combination number 2 so first in the problem paatha one enna theriyum or eccentricity problem theriyum eccentricity loading na enna eppo or load vandu centroidal axis ku parallel ah act aagudho appo the eccentricity loading centroidal axis liye act aayiruchu appadina adu compression aagala illa tension aagala but when both are parallel we can say that eccentric loading eccentric loading appadina nam enna panuvona we have to convert into normal loading problem so we have to add one force and we have to subtract one force same kind of force illa 20 kN act aachina along the axis a downward one force upward one force same magnitude and opposite direction pota summation now plus 20 plus 20 minus 20 na 20 da varu inga in 20 da irukum inga in 20 da varu summation so both are equal so i made into two combination now you have to i have to solve it so first combination matta eduthikalam first combination eduthrom appadina ipo first combination matta eduthirukom first combination la again i can recreate the diagram so first combination enna along the axis ore or force matta irukanum along the axis ore or force and the force or value enna 20 kN 
So I have drawn that one single force along the axis that is our first combination. We have to solve it and we have to find the stresses. Now, axis la or force act on the NMRI force are going tensile are going to compressive are going so the pushing kind of force are going to compression so it push panda so it compress panda the rumba sum plus one of the element so we can say that compressive force so compressive force value 20 kilo newton so I can say that 20 into 10 power 3 newton and in the area a uh, cross section area in a cross section area is a hollow cylinder so hollow cylinder area formula pi by 4 d out square minus d inner square inner diameter square that is and we have to solve it and after that the bending stress value sorry compressive stress value compressive force divided by area so 20 into 10 power 3 divided by pi by 4 250 square minus 200 square so we can solve it and we can get the answer 1.13 Newton per mm square. I have maintained that force in Newton and the area in millimeter square. So I can get that 1.13 Newton per millimeter square. That is my first stress value when I take only one combination. And after that, I have to do the second combination. So that is nothing but a couple. So I can recreate the diagram here. So what will be the second combination is at the end of the frame 20 kN is acting and along the axis there is an upward force that is 20 kN. So when two forces are parallel same in magnitude and opposite in direction it will form a couple. So couple is nothing but the force enter in between distance from the axis to the load acting. So here 20 into kilonewton, so 20 kilonewton, so 20 into 10 power 3, that is a force value and the eccentricity value 500. So that is the couple which is nothing but a bending moment, 20 into 10 power 3 into 500 which is in Newton millimeter. And then we have to calculate the bending stress value, the formula will be MBY divided by I, MB is bending moment, that is that load in eccentricity value. And what is Y? Y is actually a distance for the cross section alone. For the cross section, Y is nothing but the distance from the centroidal axis to the outermost fiber. So there are two fibers there, inner fiber, outer fiber. So for the cross section, we have to select the distance from the outermost fiber to the centroidal axis. So actually here will be the outer diameter divided by 2, that is 250 divided by 2, that is 125. So 125 mm and then I is moment of inertia for a circle the formula will be pi by 64 for a hollow circle it will be d out power 4 minus d i power 4. So after getting the value of moment of inertia y and mb we can calculate sigma b value. So if we calculate sigma b value the answer is 11.04 newton per mm square. So here sigma C value we have calculated and sigma B value we have calculated and then final answer is total stress. So total stress is nothing but summation of sigma B and sigma C. So to calculate the summation we should be clear about the direction. So at which direction it is a compression one or it is a tensile one and if it is bending at which point it will be tensile which point is compression we have to confirm that. So let me clear, so here is point A and here is point B. So when it is bending, the entire system will be like this after bending. So here the material will be elongated. material pull the B pine la material So here there will be a tensile or the material elongation. Here will be the material compression. This is the second region. This is the first region in direction. First region is simple. If compressive load is applied, all the molecules are compressed. So all are compression. There is no confusion here. When we apply bending, we have to identify that at which point it material will be elongated, at which point the material will be compressed. So at point A, elongation will be there. At point B, compression will be there. So we can say the answer at point A and point B. 
So at point A, sigma B will be elongated, that is tensile. So sigma B tensile and whatever may be the point, the compression will be always compression. And at point B, sigma B due to bending stress, the material will be compressed and sigma C always compression. So I can say that tensile is positive, compression is negative. Now I can find the answer. Sigma B always same value 11.04 Newton per millimeter square and sigma C 1.13 Newton per millimeter square. I have to substitute the value but based on the nature of the stress, it is tensile or the compression, I have to identify the positive negative. So I mentioned that tensile is positive and compression is negative and I put the sign and I can get the answer. That's it. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe.